Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Local Chat, episode 13. The camera is right here, right where I left it. Joining me today, as always, is a man who doesn't believe eggs come from chickens. It's Ian Gibson. Look, it's poop. It's chicken poop. <laughs> Admit it. All right. It's the same hole. Uh, and also joining us is a man who wishes he was made of Legos. It's Jake Terrio. Yeah, I do. I would be... I would be built as one might say oh building good one good one folks we are local chat i keep looking not at the camera uh gaming news podcast and what have you uh today we are going to be talking about lots of cool things it's also april fool's day and before we get started a little psa for you pranksters out there there are certain things that aren't funny like perhaps when you text someone saying your office at a location has been broken into and that your computer's missing um, that's just, you know, it's not funny, George. It really isn't. That's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. Neither is telling other people who work there that the studio flooded, which is the thing that normally happens. So that's also oh. not funny. Uh, also at the time that he told me that I was remoted into the computer. So <laughs> I was just <laughs> confused. Um, folks, happy April Fool's Day. Uh, speaking of fools, what have you fools been playing? You haven't been playing anything because I'm going first. <gasps> I'm going first. Daddy's going first. Oh boy. <clears throat> Folks, Oof, I don't like you, that. <laughs> if you know anything about me, you know I've been playing Valheim with the boys Tuesday nights. It's been going pretty great. Uh I I even had the urge to play it not during stream this week. So I think I'm like I'm locked back into the like mania of it. But nice. I didn't want to get started playing it in again because I'm going away this weekend. So I didn't want to like perpetuate the. I just want to build the hype, you know? It's like yeah, video game edging. Uh, so besides that, I've been playing uh, Wolfenstein, The New Order. I beat that. Uh, Turning Point Fall of Liberty made me want to play a good alternate history game, uh, which led me to now I'm playing Wolfenstein The Old Blood, uh, which is another great game. Uh, is, that, is that the DLC? Yeah, it's the yeah. standalone prequel DLC. Okay. Uh, it's it's cool. It, you go to like actual Castle Wolfenstein. Yeah. Um, oh, Wolfenstein two not on Game Pass or anything yet. Um, because I kind of want to play it. What'd you say? I thought of New Colossus. Yeah, New Colossus. It's not on Game Pass. I don't have an Xbox. <laughs> and the last time I played it was using someone's account that I no longer work for. So. I need to find a way how to play that. Uh, but I'm going to finish Old Blood. I don't know if I'm going to go back to... like I'm like caught up in the story again of uh, Wolfenstein. Blaskowitz. Yeah, William Blaskowitz. Uh, just because it's like neat. I was talking about this with Chris uh, on stream the other day. But I find it cool that their like, alternate history is the Nazis became super powerful because they discovered ancient Jewish technology. And without like Jews, the not the theoretical Nazis would have never ascended to power. So it's like this cool twist on like history, and all that sort of stuff. And I, I really like that because it's like it's neat. Um, also, that game yeah, is for those games, super dark. <laughs> yeah, for those games, it was like a balancing act for me where I loved the story and the world building, the lore. I did not enjoy the gameplay, so it was like a slog through it just to finish the story. It's kind of clunky. Yeah, it's yeah. it's way more clunky than I remember. Um, because when I was locked a lot yes. in the maps, that the yes. maps did not flow well. No, they really don't. Um, and the the combat, the stealth is really good up until you get discovered, and then you're like, what? Like, like if they find a body, it alerts everyone to your immediate location, which is yeah. mind boggling. Like, also, like the Metro. the like enhanced version I've been playing on the Xbox has super low res textures. It makes me think it's not actually running enhanced but that, oh you know i, the way I heard is. something about how you may have to toggle that at the system level okay Take so I would that. also when yeah. i first booted it it wouldn't play music so that was another interesting thing um but i'm enjoying that uh another game i was not enjoying legendary we played that a little bit uh on tuesday as well that was from the makers of turning point fall of liberty it's rough also on that stream, played some Crisis Remastered. I played about 30 minutes of it just going crazy. 
Like, I was just constantly shooting, throwing grenades at people, everything, grabbing people. And it was fun enough to make me consider actually playing the full game uh, and oh, starting I've over. Never, I never played it. I remember playing the demo a decent amount, but my, my <laughs> machine could handle it at the time, so I never actually played it. Yeah, same. I, I played a little bit, and I thought it kind of felt weird, and I wasn't really into it. Um, it still feels weird. It has this, I feel like I'm playing a tech demo when I'm playing it. I don't feel yeah. like I'm playing a video game. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to say that's a that's kind of a good thing, though, because I feel like tech demos are all like, check out this crazy stuff that you can do and crazy mechanics. And I feel like a lot of games dial that back and they're like, we have to take it seriously. But that ends up ruining it. You know, that's true. So, um, <clears throat> so enjoying that. Uh, I'm putting that like I'm moving that from my curious list to like, I will eventually play list um, playlist. Also, Dragon Quest Builders 2, I'm playing the demo on my Switch. I think that game runs better in handheld mode than it does in docked mode. But I'm, I can, yeah, I I can, can buy that, it, yeah. They're, if, they're up, if they're trying to up-res while they're docked, and they can't really handle That's what I think. Yeah. Also, I'm playing the demo, and I'm about an hour and a half into it and still going. Like, it is, I mean, it's labeled a jumbo demo, but it is a long demo. So um, let me ask you a question. I, those types of builder games, I'm curious if you have this problem as well. Those types of builder games, mm -hmm. in particular, like Minecraft, Dragon Quest Builders, etc., where you are like placing bo blocks and placing items, etc. I just can't play those on a controller. It just doesn't feel right to me. And I feel like I'm struggling with it too much as opposed to mouse and keyboard, like click, place, click, place, click, place. I, do you have that same problem? I do. Like I can't play a lot of survival games on controllers and stuff like that. Um, the only difference with this is this is a much more video game first sort of game. So like oh. it does like the box outline of where you're placing and it's only like pretty much in cardinal directions. So you're not yeah. really, you wouldn't, even when you play on mouse and keyboard, it's not like you're pointing at a spot to place a thing. Like you have to walk over to place it. So it, cause I was thinking of playing on PC instead of switch, but I ultimately went with the switch. Um, yeah, I, I, from what people are saying, even on the PC, I think you play with a controller regardless. So uh, I think that kind of mitigates it. But yeah, it's not. It's not. I wouldn't put it in the same category as like Seven Days to Die Minecraft placing. Like you yeah. feel like you have more control than Got that. Uh, and then finally, I know at least one other person has been playing this game. I jumped into Outriders today. A game that came out today, Square Enix published, I forget who the developer is because I didn't look it up. People can fly. People can fly. Um, yeah, I don't, I felt like I was playing, I felt like I loaded into my Elix save, and which is a uh, Piranha Bytes game. It, it was just like, it didn't strike me as a modern video game, and then I I played a bit of it, and so it didn't strike me as a modern video game in looks. It definitely looked not great on the Series X I was playing on. And then, just kind of like had weird, it felt empty. It felt very, the landscapes felt very empty. Like there wasn't much around or anything. And then it's got this weird story. It's got this weird character creator where some of the skin tones are just pre-assigned to character faces and you can't really mess with them or anything and then your character has a voice which seems weird and then it's just like i'm, call I, I'm calling it i'm calling it you're nitpicking i'm not nitpicking, nitpicking. i'm so, not that bad it's really that oh i thought it was genuinely i mean i can't Look, it's too early i've only played about an hour and a half to two hours of it exactly what i'm at okay so i've got a question based on other opinions I know the two of you have. I remember when the trailers for this first came out, as ha happens every so often, people were like, ah, this is the game that's going to kill Destiny, because it looked kind of like Destiny in the first marketing materials. Thoughts? Maybe. Go. I, I could see it, but it isn't a live service game. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. They said it wasn't. It it has drop in drop out co op. It no no no. I, I'm agreeing it with you, but it's not going to shooter. I I just mean it's not going to go anywhere. They're not doing like seasons or updates 
or anything like that. If it takes off, I think they will. I, I, I think if it takes off, that's what a lot of people are thinking. That's why they were saying it. But they have nothing planned currently as far as I, outward yeah, PR. I, I mean, I mean, I guess you can say technically it's not going to be a live service game, but it, it feels exactly like one. Um, it's, it's, it, I think it does some things better than Destiny. First of all, the story presentation, it, it front loads a lot of cutscenes. It's explaining a lot of stuff. I think the cutscenes are, are fairly well done. Um, the writing's a little wonky, but you can kind of get used to it. Um, it it kind of has like a tone to it. That Did the cutscene screen to. tear for you? Yeah, okay. a lot. I went okay. to the settings multiple times to check that. Okay, thank you. It was only the pre-rendered cutscenes for me that screen teared. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's like when you... Okay, Destiny... First of all, Destiny has no story. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they're lying. Because that game does absolutely zero effort at surfacing any story whatsoever. When and was if it the last time do, you played it? I played it uh, like six months ago. If that game does not make a big enough effort to like surface story, then there's no story in it. Whereas Outriders is like, boom, here's a story. And you know what, Jake? This is this story is right up your alley. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. Okay, yeah. humans have basically destroyed Earth through presumably pollution or whatever. I love it. At the very end, they're able to load up two colony ships, each of them with a couple million people. One of them blows up in orbit before they even get away from Earth. The other one, 89 years of cryo-freeze, they get to a planet they know is good, they start waking people up, but there's weird stuff going on on the planet. Hmm. And I'm going to stop it there because it gets even crazier after that. I do like it's, the premise. Yeah, it's just a solid sci-fi premise, and they're surfacing it immediately. There are characters, there are established characters that you care about other than their quips or that they happen to be standing at the behind the table that you buy guns off of. You know, like, it does just a much better job than Destiny at, at surfacing this story. Um, and I feel like Destiny, I don't know. Destiny is always like, here's an area with enemies, and I feel like this game does a slightly better job at setting up those areas full of enemies and putting a little bit of story behind it. So for example, I played one of the first, like, I don't want to call it open world, but one of the first, like go to this area in the world and complete this mission. And you are saving one of your friends, mm -hmm. you know, whereas destiny it always felt like, Hey, something's going on over here. So just clear a bunch of enemies till you get to it and come back. And this was kind of like that, but it was more heavily tied into the story. Um, but that being said, like, I, I think I think it's I think it's like a solid seven. I think it's it's very similar to yeah. Destiny. Shooting's not as good, but their tech tree is much clearer and much bigger. Uh, they have the same looter shooter mechanics. The story's better presented. It's I didn't, just like the one thing they need to do is instead of picking up items, they should just automatically yes, go into your thing. And there's a couple other but, like UI stuff, but but I I will say. I noticed towards the end of my my playthrough, not my playthrough, but my initial 90 minutes of playing, that they're on the ground. If you look at them, it pops open a little window that says like it that has the details on it and you can equip or store it right from there. So instead of you walking over it, you automatically pick it up, then you have to open your inventory to look at it. You can just look at it on the ground and go, I like that. It's nine it's plus ninety armor, equip it right away instead yeah. of having to press the button and equip it and then like Borderlands. It. Yeah. 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 I would say so it is a solid I yeah, I would say a solid seven out of ten. Like it's a it's what I don't know, I it's just nothing Yeah, because I am nitpicking, but nothing grabbed me when I was playing it, but nothing made me want to really keep playing it. Yeah, I I don't think I'm gonna keep playing it either because the gameplay I, I was I was in on the story. I was like I was in on the story and as they started revealing the tech trees and the abilities, I was like, I got some cool stuff in here. Like I'm a I'm a technomancer, so I get health back by sh by dealing damage to other people, and that's not like the that same name. for all the classes. And then yeah. I, I started out with a, with a cryo turret, so I throw a turret and it freezes enemies, which makes it easier for me to shoot them, and I, I do better damage with long range weapons. So it's like there's like four, I think there's four different classes you can choose from, yeah. and right from the get go, there's some solid differences between them. But the shooting just doesn't feel good. It's just kind of a generic cover shooter, and I don't yeah. really like it. I did the pyromancer, which mm -hmm. means I light everyone on fire. But my healing is people affected by my stuff. When they die, I get health. And that's oh. when they die by anything, uh, which cool. is pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I kind of 
part of me wants to do a stream of us playing it for like an hour I'm just co-op that. um I, I will say this definitely feels like a co-op game. Like yeah. I don't want to play the solo because number one, I'm playing it on a controller because it's on game pass on, on the console and I know auto aim and aim assist is on. It doesn't feel like it. D- did you notice that it's, it's, it doesn't feel like it at all. Yeah. Th- uh, I did. I will say they started the sensitivity pretty high and I didn't turn it down. I just kept it out that and I got pretty used to it by the end. Um, they did have a neat, like, weapon training thing with like the hologram like these like yeah. guys run through this hologram field which many games have done before but actually felt kind of good yeah. um i feel like i feel like this game is whereas destiny you can hop on and the shooting feels so good that you can play it by yourself for a little bit and do your dailies i feel like this game is unless you're really invested in the story it's really going to be about playing with your friends um yeah. kind of like with division where it's like the gameplay is serviceable but it's really just about co-op doing it with friends i i I just i i feel like i'm going up to bat for this game a little bit more than usual just because uh number one will slammed it unfairly number two (laughs) i feel like i feel like everybody was slamming this game in the last couple weeks when they had it's either the alpha or the demo that came out that was like the first hour of the game or whatever people were like look at these janky these janky animations this writing sucks the voiceovers suck etc and it and i played it and i'm like this this has some like polish on it. This is actually pretty good. The story is enthralling. Yeah. It's there. It does. I I want to call one thing out. It does this really cool thing, where it surprised me. It has dialogue options. So you're talking to somebody, and you can, and then all of a sudden it popped up four options. And the first option was like, let's do the mission thing. And then it's like backstory, that you could talk to these people about. And there are other games who have done this, but it really surprised me they did that in this one because it's like triple A polish. Is like you're standing in front of somebody, right? And it's a third person game. So you're looking behind your back and then it's just like you start talking to them and it seamlessly transitions basically into a cut scene and you're talking with them and you sit down next to them and you kind of hang out and you're doing the whole cut scene and then you get back up and you and you slowly get back up right into the exact same position you were and the dialogue tree pops right back up like it's it, it's so seamless in how it is implementing story and characters into the game. And it's so refreshing to see that because this is basically a destiny clone. And that is Destiny's biggest downfall that they are fixing right off the bat. Yeah. Is it, did they imply that there's like a morality system or is it just for world building? It's just for world building. But what I've clicked on so far, it's it's very satisfying because you're talking to the characters like there's this one guy and he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm lucky I got off. And, and he's like, OK, I'm lucky I got on the got on the ship before the and we was able to escape like we're the lucky ones. And you're like, well, are you alone now? And he goes, no, I was able to get my daughter on. Turns out she found out right before we left that she's pregnant. So I got her on as a two for one seat, you know, like, and it was like, oh, he's going to be a granddad. It's like, hey, congratulations. And he's like, yeah, she gets unfrozen in six months. And it's like, great. And he dies five minutes later, which sucks. But it was still <laughs> like, he's like nice little character building scenes as opposed to just being like, all right, Guardian, do you want to buy my guns? Also, I'm somehow a major character in this game. So, you know. <laughs> oh, that wasn't nailed it. I, I will say the... I think the like bigger opinions of that, especially that demo that came out was it got better the further you were in that demo. So I feel like a lot of people played that first hour of the demo and dropped it versus I I think it was Danny O'Dwyer who said on the bomb cast that he played to the end of it. And by the end of it, he's like, Oh, I think I might actually play this whole game. So yeah, I think that's kind of poor opening. Yeah, solid yeah. seven. I think I'm gonna play it a little bit more. I, I tried to play it more today, uh, but the servers. I don't know if the servers were down. It's just I couldn't connect. It wouldn't get past authenticating on the main menu. Um, so I don't know I if there's like the emergency maintenance or something. Um, I will say I I didn't think for a game that you seem kind of unique in, and your character is voiced i feel like they would have just done just made you a character i understand yeah, I, why there is character creation um which is the yeah. thing i always thought was weird in destiny where you're always singled out as the guardian but when you're with your other when you're with other people it's like you're all the guardian um, well they just they fix that by never having any story in the game <laughs> i hate you so much uh <laughs> We've got several spotlight videos about this, Ian. 
<laughs> Actually, I deleted those. Um, but yeah, solid 7 out of 10. Uh, definitely check it out if you have Game Pass because it's free, except free. for the payment of Game Pass. Uh, Ian, did you want to talk about any of the other games you were playing? Yeah, I'll make it very quick. Uh, still playing some Valheim. I feel like my mission now is to get you guys back into playing Valheim with me. So I'm like, I, I'm the bridge between you guys used, used to play a lot and getting us to the new content. Because as we talked about on stream, the swamp area that we're currently at, mining for iron and getting ready to fight the poison boss, it's kind of a slog. It's not a very exciting environment. It's frustrating. So I think we're all ready to go to the mountains. So I've kind of just been playing it to like, Take care of all those pain points for you guys and get us to that new area get us back in um i i uh i'm trying not to buy new games i just want to save money for a little bit and it's very hard because there's all these brand new games coming out that i want to spend money on even old games that i want to spend money on so i've been digging through game pass and uh i downloaded bejeweled three um wow. i've never really played bejeweled fun game just like a straight match three game fun game enjoying it uh, they've got a lot of content. They they have all these like, pu- they have like puzzle modes where they're just like, hey, in this one, when you match like this, this happens. So you need to make that happen 10 times within wow. three minutes. And I'm just like, okay, great. Little challenge. Make it happen. You know, I can do it. Stuff. That game is very beautiful on the Series X. And I mean, it could be beautiful on the One X too, but here's why. It's in 4K. It's in HDR. And that game is so bright. And so like when I turn it on, I feel like my entire apartment turns into like Technicolor because my TV is just like full blare, like bright yellow, bright red. And I'm just like, like playing it. It's just like burning my eyeballs. And it's it's crazy. Um, And finally, I played a little I played about an hour of War Groove, uh, downloaded it, tried it out. I'm not a fan. I don't think it's for me. I, I think I was never a huge Advance Wars fan, but I played Advance Wars mostly because it was tanks and guns. And so I think War Groove, even with all its advancements on top of Advance Wars, because it's medieval themed somewhat, I'm not really into it. Also, I'm playing it on the PC and the mouse and keyboard controls. Not good. Not good. I could just use a controller, but I'm sure it's a great game. Just not something I'm into right now. So I'm I'm still kind of just a, a nomad wandering through the uh, space of my gaming backlog as well as all the subscription services I'm part of. So um, I'll just continue that and let you know what I've been getting into next week. Nice. Well, that's everything everyone's been... Oh, I'm just kidding. Jake! Jake, 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 Jake. Jake. Uh, yeah, what are you oh, I, wanted, I wanted to dovetail off of Ian's Wargroove comment that uh, I think I... I played all the way through it. I think I actually finished it during our um, Halo Custom Edition documentary. Yes. Yeah, um, I do remember that. But I agree that Advance Wars, the part of the charm of it for people like us who are interested in the the engineering aspect of World War II combat vehicles, um, <laughs> it's def that's definitely missed in War Group. Yeah. But, um, but like the pixel art's great and the animations, the battle animations are neat. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, but that's not what I've been playing. Um, I'm looking at my list. Uh, I played because I had to go fly back to Florida recently for work, and so on the airplane I played a couple of games. I played Ooh, yeah. from uh, Yoon, our friend from Iceland, from the Isolation Game Jam. Uh, I'm like four or five hours into it. Um, it's it's pretty fun. The gameplay loop, unless I'm playing it wrong, and he can watch this and comment and say that's not how you're supposed to do it. The gameplay loop is actually pretty short because um, you go and you set up cameras in the forest to try to observe the nocturnal paths of these squirrels. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you go back to your trailer and you watch 30 seconds of recording. That's like all it records. 30 seconds fancy cameras only record 30 seconds of tape every night um (laughs) so it's like one or two minutes to set up your cameras and then one or two minutes back in the truck at night watching through the tape and planning ahead for the next day and that's just the loop and there's there's voiceover so there's like um there's a story weaved through it of like you're sending pictures and whatnot back to your supervisor and they're like hmm what's happening here let's go investigate this next 
Um, so it's got a little bit of like a like a Firewatchy vibe in mm-hmm. that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm excited to keep going with it because it just got to the part where you're like, hmm, maybe there's a vast conspiracy afoot. Ooh. Um, and the color palette's really neat, and I love the presentation of like going and putting your cameras out, and you've got like this big like rack of old CRT monitors in Ooh, your trailer. Yeah. I want to maybe with Yoon's permission, I would like to make a stream overlay of the if you go look at pictures of the big yeah. stack of CRTs from Nuts, it's delightful. Yeah, the, the look of this game reminded me a lot of Oberdin, just because mm-hmm. Oberdin was like, we're going to come up with an aesthetic and we're going to commit to it 110%. Mm-hmm. And Nuts, Nuts looks like that. It's like, this is our aesthetic. We're committed to it all the way. It's unique. It's us. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, every chapter is just like three colors. <laughs> yeah. And it's great. Love it. Um, but uh, then I played uh, Cyber Shadow, which is a like a side scrolling pixel art or not side scrolling it's a i mean i don't know it's a 2d platformer pixel art platformer Mm -hmm. um and i only played it for like an hour the music was good the art was good but i just didn't it didn't grab me gotcha uh, it's neat okay and then i keep piddling along with octopath traveler i am oh that's right you yeah you had you had started playing last time you were on i'm I think I just checked my time on the switch and it says I'm, I'm just over 60 hours and I'm definitely wow. close to the end. Um, but um, the storytelling got a lot better. Some of the characters stories are better than others, um, mm-hmm. but the combat's really good. Now that I'm like at the higher levels, the combat's really deep and tactical, which is nice. Um, I- and the art, in that game also is gorgeous Mm -hmm. i um i just downloaded that on xbox because it's on game pass because it's the year of the jrpg and Mm -hmm. uh i was like oh what if i just started playing another jrpg on top of all the other ones that i started playing so um good long yeah Um, although not not doesn't sound as long as some jrpgs no, well, I feel like I'm near the end. That's the key word. There. Oh, feel you know? great. He's got about 20, 20 hours of cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, well, until I've got, he feels like, closer. <laughs> it's got you've got your eight characters, and then when you open up the map, it tells you where the next chapter of each person's story is. And I've only got like five more of those left. Uh, and those take about one or two hours each um, to get gotcha. through a chapter of a character story. Gotcha. Um, uh, and then I replayed through Lego Racers 2 for an upcoming video. Ooh. And um, I don't want to, like, talk a whole bunch about it because I'm making a video about it. But it is, now that I'm almost two, almost, no, more than a decade removed from my original playthrough of it, there's definitely a lifting of the rose-colored goggles and being like, hmm, there's definitely some stuff wrong with this. There's a lot good about it, but there's the stuff that's bad is real bad. I never I never knew there was a two. So I played one on the PC a lot mm-hmm. as a kid, like so probably. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Um, the theme song of that main menu is one of my like anxiety hums. Uh, I, it, that's the best way I can describe it. Is like when I'm like anxious or looking for something, I'll like hum that. Oh, it's so good. Um, but I have never. What is is? I I mean, this is all gonna be in your video. But what is two compared to one? Like, is it how far away was it? When was it? What is the deal? Um, What's its story? Tell me its story, Jake. Lego Racers was I want to say 1999. Lego Racers 2 was 2001. It was made by a different studio, and it picks up immediately after Lego Racers 1. Like, the opening cutscene of Lego Racers 2 is Rocket Racer dejectedly walking down, like, a seaside street and gets, like, a newspaper, blows up into his face, and it says, like, loser on it. (laughs) Goes to his apartment. You see the Um, stool moot wobble. (laughs) But then he Dog's in bed with his wife. He sees another advertisement. (laughs) not for a children's game yeah so as a dog (laughs) says brooks was here (laughs) um like that what is it when when 
there's a knock at Goofy's back door, and the milkman kisses Goofy and then runs off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Have you not seen that? Uh, no. Heavily implies that. Goofy what is the context? Is it a cartoon or is that Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> <laughs> That's when Goofy dies. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Kingdom What's Hearts you... cutscene. <laughs> Or Goofy's wife admits to having an affair. That is, you were joking, but that is, I would 100% <laughs> believe you if you told me that uh, was it's a King cartoon. Hearts. Wait, do you not oh, know um, the Milkman thing? <laughs> no, I'm going to look it up real quick. Okay. But <laughs> then. F you, Milkman. <laughs> Rocket Racer goes and becomes Galactic Racing Champion out in space, and you have to go challenge him there. That's cool. I'm into that. It sounds cool. Sounds like but, I need uh, to do a full play there. What yeah, are you discovering you over there? Sorry, I'm just watching Goofy get cucked over here. <laughs> no, he there has a... been. <laughs> I have not seen this. It's a very right. good ending image of him just... Yeah. Is Goofy's no, I... wife ever seen in a very Goofy movie? Uh, oh, no. It doesn't look like it. Are they already separated? Uh, it's, it's not a Goofy movie. It looks like it's just a generic. <clears throat> That's um, all I've been playing. Uh, that's great. No, that's. Be I'm just to Ian discovering. I don't know if he's discovering what a milkman is or what Goofy Milkman is. I know what I'm, I'm discovering. What Goofy Milkman is? Okay. I know what a milkman is. He milks you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he bangs your wife while you're at work. Anyway, oh! <laughs> um, folks, that's what we've been playing. Now it's time for the news and that can only be introduced by the greatest song ever written on this show the news theme and it sounds a little something like this here's the news we're talking about news it's gaming news what's up news news? ah the dulcet tones of zach from save data Folks, it's news time, which means we talk about the news. What's been happening this week? Um, I uh, <clears throat> was lazy this week, mostly because of losing my job, but also because I'm lazy. And I chose today of all days to put all the news together, which was a terrible mistake because there's so much literal fake news today because of it being April Fool's Day. That it was hard to figure it out, including I got tricked by one yesterday that I put on the sheet for at least five minutes saying Halo Infinite got delayed. And the reason I realized it wasn't real is because the reply tweet to it from the official the account was for a women's toy, bedroom toy. And I was like, I don't think that's real. <laughs> and then I. It was cut in purple, though. <laughs> It was coming in purple. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so that's not real. Uh, we have no idea when Halo Infinite is coming out. But what is real is the news. And hey, No, we, we do. They've said it multiple times now. It's fall 2021. They've been saying that since last December. Uh, sure. Uh, anyway, <laughs> summer 2024 is when we'll be playing Halo Infinite. Uh, Ian, I'm going to have you kick it off this week as you're just sipping water. <laughs> Well, folks, uh, as the world's premier virtual reality, augmented reality podcast, we need to talk about the bonkers deal that Microsoft just signed with the U.S. military uh, for a $21.88 billion contract over the next 10 years to supply up to 120,000 HoloLens-based headsets to the U.S. Army. Do you guys remember Microsoft HoloLens? Yeah, they can yes. all play Minecraft in their war rooms now. I was going to yeah. say you could put cat filters on your war crimes. Yeah. Um, so granted, this is not... This is this is super tied to gaming. The reason why is HoloLens was originally pitched as a gaming slash productivity headset for consumers, but the price point was high and the field of view was rather limited. Then they tried to, to kind of get it into more of a commercial space for like medical training, um... And then eventually they've been working with the military for the last couple of years. But I think this is worth bringing, bringing up because there are a lot of technologies that are premiered and pioneered and uh, polished on government contracts. For example, GPS, 
mil invention for the U.S. military. Uh, all those satellites went up for the U.S. military. Eventually, it comes down to civilians and consumer-grade products. Number two, a lot of uh, electronic uh, tools like uh, cordless drills, cordless uh, saws, etc., started from the space program because they needed cordless technology to work while they are EVA outside of the spacecraft. Um, so there's a lot of good, basically, when the government starts throwing huge amounts of money at new technology because sometimes it will come down to us as consumers. I want to talk about some of the crazy tech. It turns out that they've been uh, working on what they call the Integrated Visual Augmentation System, which is basically Microsoft's version of the military HoloLens they have three versions of them out. They're on the third version. It just passed cold weather testing uh, an Arctic test. This is not some, some fluff headset where they are sold them a spec sheet. This is reality. And they have been testing it over the last several years. And uh, I was digging into some of the uh, statements from the military and from soldiers who have used this technology. And they are... They say it works re really well. So I want, I want to go through some of, the, some of the things that this headset has that is pretty crazy tech and just kind of bounce it off you guys and get you guys thoughts on it number one you have the lens right and so the lens is ar so it's projecting an image on the lens but you can see through the lens but on top of it are cameras including night vision camera Ooh. Night and a thermal vision. camera thermal and night vision. yes what are they sam fisher so you in you this economy a you pop a smoke grenade, you're seeing through the smoke with your <laughs> with your thermal vision. Pop the smoke and your grenade. and your lens on. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Mm. The other thing they have is um I read about how they have it tied into uh local systems. So for example, there was a very good example a soldier gave of when they're in an APC with other soldiers and they're heading into a conflict. Um, the soldiers inside, they can get pretty antsy. They don't know what's going on, but they want to see what's going on. So they may start popping hatches to stick their head out and be like, where are we? Is there like tree cover nearby? If we have to disembark, what's going on? Because they have no idea. They're stuck in a tin can. With this system, what they can do, and they've tested this, is you have the goggles on. The, the, the headset wirelessly interfaces with cameras on the outside of the vehicle, and you can just look through the hole of the vehicle, Ooh. which is crazy. Hi, Maggie. That is pretty cool. Um, the other thing they have is this is this is not super crazy. You know, this is what Google Lens was trying to do. Is essentially they are uh, interfacing with each other and with tactical plans. So if you are looking at a battlefield, you can immediately see uh, plans laid out. You can see your current pathway. You can see where other units are. If there's a unit hidden in a tree line. You know, a, a, a click away. They'll have a little dot on them through your lens. You know, oh, that's friendlies over there, etc. Um, another instance they brought up is if you are, if you're trying to call in either, you're trying to call in close air support. So you've got, uh, let's say an A-10 Warthog up in the air and yes, you've got you enemies a thousand meters away, closing on your position. Thousand. You want to call in an airstrike, but right now you're just like, listen, this is our position. We're in this tree line next to the red barn. Do you see it? And the pilot's like, yeah, I see the red barn. You're like, okay, follow the red barn north. Then there's a field, other side of the field is the enemy. And the pilot goes, okay. And then they try and bomb where you're telling them to bomb. And you just hope and pray that you don't end up, you know, getting, getting shelled, essentially. But with this system, you can essentially reach out an AR and paint that forest red through your goggles. And then you tell the pilot and you say, all right, you see the red target area? And the pilot's hooked up to the same system and he sees the, the forest painted red. And he goes, okay, got it. Yep, I, know, I see where Oh, that. sorry, I accidentally tagged five feet in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely that issue. The final thing I want to talk about is this is not crazy tech, but it's just crazy that it's basically a reality now, is they also have it wirelessly interfaced to a camera that you attach to your gun barrel. So you now have the, uh, the thing you've seen in some crazy future tech games where you can essentially point the rifle wherever you want and you see the cursor or the crosshair moving on the screen. You can put it around corners. It's all integrated in the system. So it's crazy tech, all tied to this military. But just think about if just one-tenth of that technology comes down to VR headsets 10 years down the line. And you actually have functioning VR, AR with this wireless yeah. integration, et cetera. That's crazy. You get, I can just you shoot get around corners. 
Is there an exclamation yeah. point over your commander? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> when you alert someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh. so reading this, it was I was very excited because this is basically when you think about like magic, what's it called? Magic eye, all these other technologies that magic have leap. Yeah, magic leap. Yeah. That that are in this VR AR space that are trying to trying to work. But the problem is they're running out of money faster than they can get to market with something that actually works. Yeah. This is basically the military injecting $22 billion into the VR AR space. And that's fantastic because that puts a lot of pressure off Microsoft. That's going to put a lot of pressure off the VR AR developers that can now do uh, military and defense contracts on the side while they're doing games, you know? So this is, this is basically just a huge cash infusion into the VR AR space. And I'm excited to see what eventually is going to trickle down into the consumer market. Like I'm just thinking, man, I would love to be on a plane and to put on my my thin goggles and I can look through the hole and I can look below me as I'm flying over Kansas. That would be awesome. That's the technology they're basically using now. Just all these crazy consumer applications that can come through. So anyways, very excited about it. Crazy That's pretty stuff, cool. I, I didn't know that was such a big thing. Um, but being able to be like in a public bathroom and look through all the walls and stuff, that'll be so cool. I can't. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, Goofy never would have been cucked if he could have seen through that door, and seen the milkman coming. <laughs> you don't want to see the milkman coming, <laughs> Jake. Oh, speaking of milkman, uh, would you? What What do you want to talk about? Anything on here suit your fancy? Of these, of these ones, of these beautiful ones, or uh, unless you have news of which none of us know. I don't think so. Okay. Not anything that wouldn't be an April Fool's Day prank. Like every April Fool's, I flirt with the idea of texting my mom that my wife and I are pregnant. <laughs> and I never do it. That's a terrible <laughs> idea. Oh, that awful is pregnant. <laughs> yeah. It's a girl. And she is pregnant. Hey, buddy. I'm chewing this ball right now. See? Nice. Oh. Um. I can say that, what's this one? I think I the only one that I'd actually seen is this thing about the Witcher 3 next-gen patch coming in. Uh, or is it, I guess it's a patch, or I guess it's not a patch. I mean, I guess it, it would be a next-gen update. Xbox. Yeah, I think that's the key thing that I hear about with this is, <clears throat> are you going to screw me? Are you going to charge me to play this game? in next gen visuals even though i'm currently already playing it on my next gen console I, and if the answer is yes then I, I, i'm not gonna curse on this podcast but just imagine what i would say to you if you're uh, gonna try and charge I'm me i'm pretty sure when they first announced this back this is before cyberpunk even came up they said the next generation update for the witcher 3 is free is a free update. okay that's good that's um, so I'm assuming they have a dedicated team that's working on it, and yeah. that it's not people getting pulled away from whatever they're doing with Cyberpunk right now. Because Cyberpunk's not on the PS Store anymore, right? It's still, still not on yeah, the PlayStation still not Store. On. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Um, I I wonder if this will make me. Every time I try The Witcher Three, I get further and further. So I made it like six or seven hours in the last time, which was last year. So maybe now when I try it again, I'll make it even It'll further. Be, isn't it like a hundred hours? Probably. Yeah. But so you'll I finish it in fifty I, years. I like really want to play it and I really enjoy playing it, but every time I've tried it, I've like something else has come up, so I've just fallen off of it. Um I wouldn't I'd like I need to go have a console in The Witcher Three, get in a plane crash on a desert desert island on a desert island that has power i did and, hear that uh, it it runs better than you would think on the switch oh really yeah surprising um speaking of cyberpunk they put up a big old patch uh for the game and boy it is quite a scroll um What's interesting? I it was Eight thousand words. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it. <sighs> oh, this is long. I well, I'm gonna be honest with you. I am struggling to care at all about this story. Oh because yeah, there's two things. 
two things. Number one, that apology where they were like, oh, well, we didn't realize how badly, how bad of a state the game was in. We didn't know those bugs were there. QA screwed it up. Yeah, it's like you cannot you cannot say that and then at the same time turn around and put out an 8000 word yeah patch note because that points to there is a lot of stuff in there that you had to touch and fix. And number 2 is that according to the people who this patch is already out and they played it it doesn't fix it it they're still running into crazy bugs all over the place. So, I don't know if this was a lot of low hanging fruit. I don't know if this was a lot of back end stuff, but the performance is still bad on last gen consoles, which again, the game is not technically out on next gen consoles. It is only a last gen console game. And it does not fix a lot of the like core mechanical problems with that game. Yeah. So I don't want to be mean to them, but too little, too late. Oh, way yeah. Too little, way too late. Yeah. I mostly pulled this story because it's just crazy that they're. It's just, it's still so hard to put into words how I feel about this game, other than I didn't like it, A, anyways, and B, it should not have come out. And and the fact that all you can do all these patches that you want, but you said every NPC has their own roots and lives and character and blah, 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 and then in the game, it's just a guy walking back and forth across a crosswalk all day. Like, but... Maybe that's all that. what he loves. Maybe that's so. what he loves. But all that said, at least they fixed an issue where the urinary stream could still be visible after NPC stopped peeing and moved away from the spot. So I'm just glad our friend isn't peeing while walking around. Yeah, this is crap. Um, what I did actually want to talk about uh, is Xbox's commitment to game preservation. And this isn't anything specific It's just the way I feel about Xbox, and I don't know if this is like a Phil Spencer-led thing, although I kind of think it is because he's a very big video game man uh, who enjoys his nostalgia. He big Uh, video game man. He big video game man. Uh, Not Reggie fils big, but he's pretty big. Um, So backwards compatibility is coming to clouds for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members. That's a basically fancy way of saying games are coming, more games are coming to your cloud for Xbox Game Pass. I didn't even know they didn't have backwards compatible stuff on there, but it kind of makes sense. Um, yeah. But I just think... Clear, it, it's select titles yeah, right select now. Titles it looks, right like there, looks like there's 16 of them. I just think it's it's really neat that of the companies, the one that hasn't been around the longest is the one that is taking game preservation so seriously. Um, and it's not it's like they're coming good. out and saying anything specific about it, but it's like Nintendo with this pulling stuff with Mario died yesterday um, or Sony saying they don't really care about backwards compatibility, all that sort of stuff. It's crazy that they're the Xbox is the one that is like, Oh, you want to play Mario, the original Morrowind still? Sure. You can play the Xbox version of that on your, on the latest console. Like we kind of care about that stuff. And yep. I, and Nintendo doesn't seem to want to bring stuff back. Sony doesn't really care. It's just, it's cool that they're doing this. I like that they're doing this. And every time something like this comes out, it's like, Oh good. Glad you're, you're, you're keeping, keeping on, keeping on, on it. You wanted to say Jake. Say that for Microsoft play has no limits. That's the show folks. Thank you for, um, yes. Play has no happy Easter Xbox. Get it. Um, get it, get it. Place- oh, oh, great! Slogan. Yeah, jump in. That's the old slogan. Jump, jump now in. Now it's play has no limits. I'm while they shut it. down the PS Vita store. Oh, do you want to talk about the PS3 and Vita store? Uh, not no. last week. But we talked about this last week. No, we talked about the rumor last week. Oh, and PlayStation. <laughs> made it official this week you know what screw the rest of the news because honestly it's a light news week and do you know what that means can i do some quick hits though can i do some quick hits real quick oh yeah i think there are some things we're talking about ready okay Mm -hmm. next call of duty reportedly set in alternate history 1950s where world war ii never ended um uh, more call of duty news the uh lots of leaks about the new Warzone map which takes place in the 1980s but activision is being a meanie and using dmca strikes to take down tweets about it 
uh, which is ridiculous. E3 rumors that it could partially, it would be a digital only event partially behind a paywall, but then the E3 account quickly tweeted that there will not be a paywall. Quite frankly, I don't trust the E3 Twitter account. There probably will be some sort of paywall <laughs> element to it. Um, and I believe that is it for the, the quick hits. Thank you for the quick hits. This was brought to you by Ian Gibson, quick hits. Um, they did say the rumor about that 1980 map was, uh, it is a like a 1980s version of Verdansk. So like the stadiums being built and all this sort of stuff. Pop out because isn't that game like 18 months old or 24 months? Yeah, old, like this? but you think about it. Like so many people complained when Apex changed the map, like actually changed the map and didn't have the old one there. Like I think at least this helps people still have the orientation of like where you are on the map. But yeah, they're quickly moving to the Dota space where there is one map forever and always and you are creating an insular fan base that everybody hates including the fan base there's only one map in dota yeah that's and an anime stupid and 99 percent of dota games are like that mobile games it is just one map all animes map. are the same um okay so that's going to be the news folks which means we get to now since it's a light news week we get to add three games to the subpixel rating system list Bubba, bubba. Oh, hubba bubba max, baby. Um, I don't know if are either of you prepared with the game. No. I'm not oh. familiar with this segment. <clears throat> yeah, I know. I kind of put it in the stream thing and then didn't explain it. So, anyways, there's the official subpixel rating system, which I will send to you right now, just so you have a copy of it, Jake. Um, At like three wills out of four. Yeah, kind of. Uh, so every week we add, we're supposed to add one game to the list every week, but there's been an amendment that when it's a light news week, we add three games and then we debate where they go on the list. Only the games on the list are ranked on the list. So the best game of all time right now is Outer Wilds and the worst game of all time is Brink. (laughs) Yeah. And to be clear, this isn't about you submitting what you think is the best game of all time. I get it. It's just, you're submitting a game for discussion. Yes. Um, uh, it is just the person who who said it oh you said why didn't it because that was the first one we did and i can't remember who brought it to the table so okay i kind of didn't think it was generally discussed because we started by talking about it as a solid that is a five out of ten the the impetus is will wants to have a rating system where a five out of ten a five is the new seven you know people act like a seven out of ten is just an average game but in reality Mm -hmm. based on the one to ten system five should be the average yeah, middle of the road yeah so we said yeah. outer worlds is a five yeah out of ten. and that okay that okay. turned into this chaotic new list okay. um which is a nightmare anyways while jake is thinking ian do you have a game to submit this week yeah look i'm gunning for it i want that top spot we need to talk about yakuza zero and how it's the greatest game ever oh. made my familiarity with the yakuza series is purely from that video that you had me edit <laughs> that's what i can add to this discourse wait what i've not played yakuza but you had me edit a video that we titled in the yakuza series size doesn't matter about how oh, the that open one. worlds okay, were okay, designed okay. are you talking about the yakuza kwami ruby because i edited that one no no, no um no. yeah so this basically yakuza zero it's fantastic story it's a great open world game there was so much to do in it it's got i i like the combat i know some people don't like it, but I think the combat's got some great beat em up brawler type variety to it. Just incredible, memorable characters. Um, even for fans of the series who have played every Yakuza game, they say it is the best Yakuza game story wise. All sorts of uh, mini games, just literally the best side missions and side quests in any video game I have ever played because of the variety, the humor the uh, emotional and moral depth in them, and then also how they tie back into the main. Um, look, Outer War- Outer Wilds, it's a great game. Yakuza 0 is a better game. I'm arguing for number one. Okay. That's a pretty strong argument. Um, I kind of want to go to bed, so I'm not going to submit the game I originally was going to submit. <clears throat> but I think in order to make this process go a little bit faster... I'm going to submit. Wait, wait, wait. So Yakuza Zero number one? No, 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 no. We 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 say all three games, then we talk. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. 
Sorry, that's fine. Okay. Um, I'm gonna submit. I don't know if I want to do that now. Jake, do you have a game? I have a couple, but I'm just <laughs> trying to decide. No. Like a funny. You one know what? I'm gonna submit it. mine anyways. It's Doom, the original. Ninety-three. Oh, that's a good game. That's a good game. It is a good game, and it is the impetus impetus starting point of all modern shooters uh it has great level design great weapons great enemies it's balanced very very well uh and it's not it's not too hard or too easy it's like the hurt me plenty is the right level of it even the higher difficulties balance themselves very well um it is huge community behind it there's so many wads that i don't think you could play them all in a lifetime um multiplayer multiplayer big, big starter for, for multiplayer shooters yes and then also uh it's still stuff still coming out for it i mean sigil came out 2 years ago i think um that's right. the romero wad yeah that's the romero one that's the only doom game i have not played other than i haven't finished eternal but other than sigil uh i've yeah i've played all the dooms Honestly, I think Doom 2 is better than Doom 1. But um, Doom is an incredible game. And I stand by it. Uh, I won't argue for its place yet. I'll wait for that. Jake, what do you got for me? Okay, I'm going to save some of, like, if you watch, like, my Games of the Decade video, I'm going to save all of those. I'm going to say uh, uh, Prey, the Arcane 1. Um mm. When just did that come out? I think 2017, I want to say. I could be wrong. It's 2016 or 2017. Um, just as far as, like, first-person, like, sims go, like, immersive sims, um, just excellent design, excellent world-building. Um, all the the weapons have like the ones that are like canonically like rooted in like like their like maintenance weapons those are like the right amount of clunky and then the actual weapon mm. weapons are nice and refined um in terms of how they handle the story was great the music was great the does the creature design was like the perfect amount of like right in between that that soft spot of like like conventional weird alien design and then like really new like i hadn't really ever seen anything like that before um yeah that yeah. back hat that that last last act though mm -hmm. not too great mm, agree to disagree okay it depends that on opening it. though from it the opening that opening level i think is one of the best opening levels if i mean if you consider it as a level it's a whole yeah you know whole big thing it's but, real good yeah that opening bit is maybe one of the best because i have my friend and i played the demo when they released the demo and it was just that first bit and we recorded that and that that moment where spoiler happens if people are watching this and haven't played prey we both were like <gasps> yeah I just remember the trailers doing like the repeating of the good morning and then like mm -hmm. him checking his eye every day. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Um, great. That's a good submission. This is going to be fun. Um, where do you think prey ranks on the list? I mean, in this list that we have here, I definitely put it above shadow of the Colossus. I don't know if I'd put it above outer wilds, but that's because outer wilds just was like, precision engineered for me mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. where uh, of of all the games we have here now i would still keep outer wilds at number one um I'd put at number two i completely agree above shadow of the colossus so the only thing i will say i'm i'm not fighting heavily for this but shadow of the colossus i feel like introduced a lot of stuff like scale like you are fighting a giant mm -hmm. monster and actively interacting with that monster as opposed to just throwing attacks at it as well as you know expanding on the open world concept a little bit um prey doesn't do quite as much new stuff 
I but that being that. said, I I could see either either swapping. Yeah. I think that the thing that that Prey's kind of like the flip side of that, where Shadow of the Colossus was groundbreaking, and Prey had taken a, a so much stuff from its genre and just kind mm-hmm. of refined it into this really elegant as yeah. arcane is no yeah that, that's a good point so number two is uh prey yeah i was i was starting to think about whether or not it would be two or three we can put it at two because we have yeah. not introduced it yet. is brighter and more colorful than Shadow of the yeah. Colossus. And I, I'm just going to say it. At some point, we will have to introduce a mechanic to move things. Change the list to move yes. things. But we don't have that mechanic. That's an amendment. And, uh, this is not fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ray is in there. I don't like how that 17 looks, but I'll figure that out later. Um, okay, Ian. Well, you should also stylize it so that it's all caps. Hey, well, oh, thank um, you. If it's easy for you, I think... Can we throw the list up on stream real quick? Oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about Yakuza about. 0. I feel like this is going to be a bit of a fight, but I think Outer Wilds is a fantastic game. But the thing that Yakuza 0 does, I feel like Outer Wilds does a really great job at uh, storytelling through exploration and world building um, and kind of crafting these very unique I don't want to call them levels, but these unique environments that kind of tie and mesh all together mm-hmm. and unraveling that mystery. I feel like Yakuza Zero. This is this is getting very pedantic. These games are both very, very similar in terms of the quality. I feel like Outer Wilds does, for example, five things very, very well. I feel like Yakuza Zero does 20 things very, very well. There is so much in that game. Um stories how the fighting plays out the mini games how the environment feels how things are unraveling the mini games the side quest how you start bringing those side quest characters back into the main quest it does all of that stuff so well so i feel like my i don't want to call my last ditch argument but i feel like my one point i'll make for why yakuza should be over outer wilds is that there is much more in yakuza zero and all of it is pretty much to the same level of quality as in Outer Wilds. So they're both fantastic games. It's just that Yakuza has more in that fantastic game. What I did have a lot of fun running the um, cabaret. Yeah. I think it was the most fun with a video game mini game I've ever had. Yeah. Not having played Yakuza Zero, I can't in good conscience deny that it shouldn't be number one. But I will say that on your point of it doing a lot of things really well, I would argue that Outer Wilds refine or like um, curated the curated number, like the things you can do being of a yeah. smaller number, yeah. um, makes the experience that much more. I- um, so I'm I'm just going to drop this. I'm going to drop this right in Will's lap because I think he's the only person who's played both of them to completion. Dude, I Will. think Outer Wild's sense of discovery and engagement with your brain is... I don't want... Uh, the wording isn't right here because I can't think of it. It's not a higher level, but it is a more better... A more better experience than yeah. Yakuza 0 ever did, despite Yakuza 0 being another elegant, perfect game. But yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Outer Wilds is like re- watching a really good TV show, and Yakuza 0 is like watching a really good... No, Outer Wilds is like watching a really good movie once, and Yakuza 0 is watching a really good TV show for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Like It's hard to yeah. compare those two, but I would rather go watch the movie again than try to watch through a yeah. whole TV show again. And, and I think you have a very good point where the, the sense of exploration is very rewarding in Outer Wilds, whereas there is, there's nothing quite as rewarding as that in Yakuza 0. Yeah. Um, okay, Yakuza 0, I put it to... Okay, okay, hear me out. Doom 93 should be number one know about this i mean it's a i think pretty perfect video game it yeah, does it, it... look i know you've played it recently but it it's hard to go back to 
No, it's very easy to go back to. As I someone who it, played... Those maps are very confusing. I played the first two or three levels a couple years ago, and then the maps quickly get confusing. Uh, if you'll allow me a comparison, <laughs> and tell me if I'm off base, Doom 1993 is the, the Beatles of video games. Where it was like this huge, like groundbreaking thing that was super influential for such a long time. But there's a lot of better stuff now. We can look back on it and yeah. we can say that was amazing for its time. But then we can look at all the things that came from it and be like, y but here's, you know, this is yes. the really good stuff. No one's going to say Ringo Starr is the best drummer in the world, even though yeah. one of my it's college not even the best drummer in the Beatles. Me that he was. <laughs> Yeah, and I think I think Doom, Doom is a fantastic game, but like like Jake was saying, it's more about groundbreaking and inspiring the games after it than it necessarily is within that game itself. So I think just to throw a number out here, I'm tempted to put it at number three above Prey. And the reason why I'm doing that, Jake, is because you made a very good argument where where Prey is about the next pinnacle of immersive gaming. Mm. And whereas Doom is more of a pioneer, and I think in no, that I'd head, agree with you. Yeah, in that head-to-head -head fight, I would historical significance. Yeah, I would prefer the pioneer versus the the uh, I don't want to call it the innovator, but the the improver. The pioneer mm -hmm. is better than the improver. Sure, I would put it yeah at number three above Prey. It's a yeah. fantastic game. Um, it, it, it does. I I hate to stick to this point, but I feel like as we're near the top of this list, these got to be games that you can go back to. 10, 20 years down the line and still feel fantastic. And I think Doom 3 is, I mean, Doom has aged a bit I'm, too much now. I mean, I'm just going to put Doom 2 over it eventually anyways, so I will settle. <laughs> I mean, everything I said about Doom 1, Doom 2 is a better game. Okay, no so... On Earth. Oh, Doom 2 is so good. Anyways, if anyone wants to play Doom, make sure you download GZ Doom and play it that way, because it is the best way to play Doom. But what's the difference? It's just like it's a better engine. You can run it at any f like you can up-res all the textures and everything. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's I you, you can't play Prey on an ATM. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody today on TikTok who played Doom on a cross stitch. Excuse me. Oh, I think yeah. I saw something about that. I didn't watch the yeah. video. But... It was kind of a cheat, but basically he had this way where he had a bunch of servos and each servo had, each servo was a single cross stitch, you know, like the, the sewing project. And the cross stitch had two sides to it. One was black and one was white. And using that, he was able to make a 25 by 25 cross stitch pixel display and actively flip the cross stitches from black to white. And he got it running Doom. It was crazy. Amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I sent you that link, Ian. Uh, oh, yeah, GZ Doom. You, you're saying GZ Doom? Yeah, that's why I was confused. I've I have heard of Z Doom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah. All you need is the um <clears throat> the WAD files for the original game, and then you're yeah. good to go. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only way to play it these days because it's great. Um, folks, our new list. Number one game of all time, according to Subpixel. Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza 0. Yakuza. Uh, number three, Doom 93. Number four is Prey 2017. Five, Shadow of the Colossus. Six, Battlefield 1943. Seven, The Outer Worlds. And the worst game of all time, according to Subpixel. Brink. I am. I feel like I need to just say something real quick. I think we need to start bringing some bad games because as it stands right now, Prey and Shadow of the Colossus are the most average video games of all time, according to our new list. And that doesn't sit right with me. So we got <laughs> we got to balance this down a little bit. I'll think up some, some other ones. Um, I got to make sure I tweet this picture out so everyone can see it. Um, folks, that's going to do it for the show today. Let me throw on the little ending music here. And we can all start to get out of here. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Thanks You're for welcome. having me. Yeah, I love, I love having you guys on. Um, folks, this has been Local Chat, your number one video game podcast, if you listen to this the most. 
Um, we uh, are Subpixel. You can find all of our stuff at subpixelfilms.com. That'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel where you can check out all of our awesome, awesome content. Also check out our Subpixel Streams YouTube channel and Subpixel Shorts YouTube channel if you want more direct feed of our sweet, sweet content. I have been your host, William Crosby. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. Below me is Ian Gibson. Ian, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Think Gibson, where I've just been. Um, uh, apparently, there's some stupid TV show about The Rock as a kid, but it's also from the future when he's running for president. And I'm just so, so happy that <laughs> I don't watch over the air cable television anymore because mm -hmm. that's stupid. So if you want to hear more about that, go follow me on Twitter at Think Gibson. Do it, girl. Uh, and also joining me today was Jake Terrio, one of the members of Subpixel. Jake, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, at, uh, it, Twitter and Instagram at underscore Jake Terrio. Perfect. Perfect. Folks, don't forget to check out our friends over at Save Data Team. They're Save Data Team on all socials. Um, yeah, that was a good week. Happy April Fools. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you next week, folks. This song's about to end, which means we legally have to stop the stream. So have a great weekend and a great life. We'll see you next week.